Hello, everyone. Welcome to the English devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. Let's begin in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day that you have given us. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Father, I ask that you will forgive me of my sins and offenses that I've done against you so that my prayer can enter the sweetness of your heavenly throne. I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that once again we can turn to your word for our example, for our edification, for our growth. I thank you and I praise you, Father, because your word never changes. You are the same God of yesterday, today, and you will be the same tomorrow. I praise you, Lord. I ask you that you will be with those in our church and the visitors of our church, the members, the friends of our church, those who just come because they're forced to. I ask you, Father God, that whatever situation they face, that you will be in the midst of them, that you will give them comfort and peace. If they're struggling with illness, Lord, that you will reach down and give them comfort in your healing hand. Father, if they need to learn something that you are trying to teach them, make it very clear to them, Lord, so that they can open up the hearts for what you have in store. Father, I ask for our youth who are struggling in various ways and situations. You only know the struggles that they face, the struggles that are hidden deep in their hearts. I ask you, Father God, that you will be real to them, that they will cling to you with everything that they have. They'll look to you for their guidance. Father, these things I ask in your son's name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's devotional was written by Jersey Cardenas and translated by Maria Elena Cardona. It is titled, God's Word Lives. Our biblical base is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. So says the Word of God. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. What is the gospel? It is described as the good news. It is the message of Christianity and the books in which the record of the life and teaching of Christ is found. God has provided a form of redemption through his son, Jesus Christ. Through the gospel, the Holy Spirit works for the salvation of human beings. In it, life is recounted and the high quality of his moral precepts. It is the only one, a true book that explains what God wants for you and what is to come. He does not want you to just learn his laws, norms, and statutes. He wants you to be a doer of his word, to take the message of salvation to others who do not know him. God wants you to practice his word by expressing with your mouth all that Jesus has done for you, his teachings, his miracles, his love and dedication, his fidelity, and above all, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Spread the seed so that the best fruits come out of it. Complete the mission that has been entrusted to you and the gates of heaven will open for you. Knowing the gospel is good, but practicing it is a source of eternal life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let me be very, very clear. The way, the truth, and the life is Jesus Christ. Through faith in him is the only way that we will reach salvation. It doesn't matter what we do, say, think, or feel. Faith 
is the only way that we will reach eternal life. We don't reach eternal life by doing anything and checking off boxes or even practicing what the Bible says. The way to eternal life is accepting God's gift of salvation and forgiveness of our sins. Don't let anything or anyone tell you that you must earn your salvation because we can't. Salvation is by faith. It's a gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone that we have eternal life. And God did it this way so that we cannot go and brag saying, I've done this to get eternal life. But look at the other person. They haven't done enough. No, my brothers and sisters, the gospel is very clear. The good news of Christ sacrifice on the cross is that there is nothing that we can do apart from receiving his gift of salvation in order to receive eternal life. My brothers and sisters, God once again is extending that invitation to you today. Won't you receive it? Accept his love for you. Experiment his faithfulness in your life receive the forgiveness of your sins. There's nothing too much, too horrible and horrific that you have done that Christ cannot forgive you. There is no path too far away that you can run through that Christ cannot reach you with his forgiveness, his grace, his mercy, and his love. My brothers and sisters, accept that free gift today. Amen. May the Lord receive the honor and the glory. Sanctuary 
Amen. What a beautiful song. And now we invite you to continue listening to our daily Bible reading, which can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, chapter 12, and chapter 13. So says the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. For this reason the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman came from man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things are from God. Judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb idols however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, for the Jews or Greeks, for the slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member but many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three but the greatest of these is love. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. My brothers and sisters, thank you so much for tuning in to our daily devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. I pray this devotional will encourage you to reach out, to accept the gospel, the good news of Christ's salvation for you and for me.
And now we ask that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen.